Kurt, why don't you tell me a little bit about your process of China painting? Well, you see this on the computer here. I've got a picture of somebody's hand. So I'm looking at that. I put the ground down first, just the, the very lightest color, and work, work from light to dark. That's the way this stuff works. If you get it too dark and fire it, there's no going back. You can't go back because it's uh, <coughs> burnt in and anything you put on top of it just gets absorbed into it. So if I paint it black and fire it and decide after I get out of the kill I want to paint it white again, <laughs> no way. It doesn't happen. You can't do it. So you've got to plan it a little bit. So I want you to talk to me a little bit about the series of globes you've been working on. Why are you fascinated with the globe form? Well, you know, I've always sort of been fascinated with territory, you know. I know when you're a kid, if you live out in the country, in the woods, you've got all that space to move around in. That isn't regulated by anybody. It isn't regulated by adults. It isn't regulated by anybody. It's sort of a secret spot to run around in. <clears throat> and you lose that after a while. But we used to map it. I used to map it. And, give you know, name things. We name different places. And, it was pretty much our world, you know. Plus, I've always been fascinated with just uh, exploration. So you see all those old maps of the New World, you know, when they weren't quite sure what was what was there. They'd have those animals with two heads running around and then all this fantastic stuff. Or even when they thought the Earth was flat. It seemed like a much more interesting place to me. A little bit of mystery involved. Yeah, yeah. So the clothes are like... Uh, just my feeling of what of what's around, you know, it's not necessarily, I mean, this stuff kind of serves as making it a globe, but the rest of it's just sort of uh, all that stuff that happens in your particular world. Uh, a lot of these things are like, you know, symbols of weird animals that they found. Just a, a trip, it's just a trip. So how much pre-planning do you do when you're starting with a blank? As little as possible. <laughs> yeah, as little as possible. I can't think that way. I just can't do it. I've got to uh, get to start working on it, and then it, it kind of comes together. Otherwise, I just get in my own way, and it's just it's, it's a disaster. I kind of start with one element and work my way out from there. Decide what the what the central sort of theme is, and then just add to it. But yeah, I can't, I can't, I, I could sit out and plan the whole thing out on paper, and I've tried, and it just, I can't, get, it's no fun, there's no surprises. So, this way, I'm, you know, it's a, again, it's an exploration, this way it's an exploration rather than just work. Yeah, so why don't you tell me a little bit about the process of casting the globes and well, all of that is just sort of, you know, necessary busy work. But you know, first I decide the shape I'm going to make, and then I, I just hand build it. This one I guess I threw. Uh, and then move it around, smooth it out, change it around. Then take it and make a, make a plaster mold of it. This one was a one, two, three, four piece mold. Top, bottom, two sides. And uh, cast it, porcelain. Which is a mold this big is quite a project. I had a, it takes a lot of slip. This takes maybe maybe 20, 25 gallons of uh, slip. I had a big bucket of it mixed up out there, 50 gallons of slip, and it has a pump in it that circulates the slip. And uh, I turned the pump on and went back to the house to get something. And the pump, the, the hose slipped out of the, slipped out of the bucket. And, uh, Pumped 50 gallons of clay slip into my backyard here. Huge mess. I just got it cleaned up last week. So this is the second series of globes you've made. How do you see this series being any different than the first one you made a few years ago? Well, the subject matter is different. That's about all that's different. I didn't make, the, you know, I made six of them, I think, the last time. So as a ways to go yet. Um, the only way to know is to just keep working on them and see what happens, because as I said, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen until I get there. The trick is to just uh, 
get up and do it. So I know when you first started china painting in the late 80s, there weren't too many contemporary ceramic artists using china paint because it had the stigma of being uh, part of the old lady china painting syndrome. Yeah. How did you become fascinated with china paint? Well, I never was. I never was, really. I just became fascinated with imagery, which I was always interested in. But, you know, I made, I made pots and, you know, made things out of clay, which I loved. But I always felt like something was missing. It was just some, something was missing. And, and it was, it was uh, the imagery, you know, ideas about things that were happening, rather than just the material itself. But you know, when I was a student, I was the same way. And I used to try, I used to try different things. I tried underglaze. I tried, you know, slips, black slips, and draw with that. But I always, but it was totally uncool. And, and I was as conformist as the rest, you know. And it wasn't until I got older that I realized that, you know, this is, who cares? Just do what you want. So, uh, oddly enough, when I came here, I started doing it. I got here and tried to do the same stuff I did up in Montana, and it just wasn't working. And I, I thought, it occurred to me, well, it's just, you know, do what you want. Do what really interests you. And uh, nobody's watching anyway, so go ahead. So I did, and it worked out pretty good. I'm doing what I want. I get more, you know, I guess. So with your upcoming uh, mid-career retrospective coming at the mag museum uh, and seeing the wide range of work uh, from the 1970s to the present, what are your thoughts about surveying 30 plus years of work? Well, it's a little unnerving to look at it. It is. It, you know, I just try not to pay too much attention to it. One thing about having done this for this long a time is I don't take myself as seriously as I used to. <laughs> I just do what I do, you know. And all, and, when I was 30 years old, that would have been just a total, it would have been insane. I just, yeah, but, you know, of course I love it, but I, I, I'm not, uh, I can look at it with some, uh, with some, uh, being objective. Objectivity, there's the word I'm struggling for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I look at